The gradient of a multivariable function is a vector whose entries are corresponding partial derivatives of our function. Because it's a vector valid function, it can be represented by a vector field on the input plane of our function. Today we would like to build up to the most important property that the gradient of a function has, namely that the gradient evaluated at any given point on the graph will return a vector that points in the direction of the function's steepest ascent. In other words, if I placed a dot on the function's input plane and a corresponding output dot on the graph, as I let the input dot flow along the gradient vector field, the output dot increases its altitude the fastest. To prove that, we need to introduce the concept of directional derivative. So a directional derivative is a measure that tells you what is the rate of change of your multivariable function as your input x, y per changes along a certain direction in the input plane that is usually indicated by a vector. But how do we compute the directional derivative? So let's say I would like to measure the rate of change of my function as my input changes along the direction indicated by the vector 2, 3. And let's denote that vector as v by the way. So let's now break this entire thing up using regular partial derivative. So as we notch our input in the direction of the vector 2, 3, what we actually do is we notch the input's x-coordinate twice and we notch the input's y-coordinate three times. And so it's actually the same as just going by two nudges in the x-direction and by three nudges in the y-direction. So we can express that directional derivative as a linear combination of the partial derivatives with respect to x and y, as just 2 times the partial of x plus 3 times the partial of y. Is there a slicker way of writing this? So, when we recall that gradient was in general just a vector carrying all of the partial derivatives of our function, what we have here is pretty much just the dot product of the gradient of f and the vector v. Defining the directional derivative this way, that is by the dot product of the gradient and the vector that indicates the direction of the input's change, help us tremendously. Because now, to find the direction of the steepest ascent, we just need to find the vector that maximizes its dot product with the gradient vector. I won't be able to solve this problem unless I specify some constraints on the vector v. For example, that is let's say unit length, because if I didn't do this, the question I'm asking here would be pretty much the same as just asking, well, what is the greatest real number? It doesn't make sense. There are two ways to solve this optimization problem, the intuitive one and the rigorous one. We'll go through both of them, but let's start with intuition. The dot product of some two vectors is the product of the magnitudes multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. We can redefine it, I think, saying that it's going to be just the product of the projection of the vector b onto the vector a multiplied by the magnitude of the vector a itself. It's like taking one vector and the other vector's shadow on it and then multiplying those two lengths together. Our problem then simplifies to just finding the vector whose projection onto the gradient vector will be the greatest. And so let's just kind of spin around that v vector and see what happens to the shadow it casts on the gradient. And I will, I think it's pretty clear that the best choice for the vector v is going to be the vector that is perfectly aligned with the direction of the gradient vector itself, because then its projection is going to be just itself. And rigorously, we're trying to maximize the expression magnitude of the gradient times 1, which is the magnitude of v, times the cosine of theta, which depends only on the angle theta. And because cosine varies from negative 1 up to 1, and its greatest value is achieved between 0 and 2 pi for, well, 0 and 2 times pi, we'll get that, well, the theta, the angle between our two vectors, has to be either 0, so that they are perfectly aligned, or 360, which also means that they're perfectly aligned. I just couldn't twist my, my hand all the way. Anyway, both of those angles result in a vector perfectly aligned with our gradient vector. And so we see that the directional derivative of our function, which is the rate of change of the function in a particular direction, is the greatest as we move in the direction pointed by the gradient. And so the gradient has to point 
in the direction of the steepest functions ascent. I really hope you guys enjoyed some mountain climbing with me and see you in the next one. Bye.